Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another episode of Vlogmas and this is probably the one you guys have been waiting for. I posted on my Instagram that questionnaire app that's like the NGL app, I'm assuming like not gonna lie app. And I said you guys can anonymously ask me questions and I haven't opened any of them yet. So it's gonna be a first time open read response. I plan to answer all of them. There's quite a few but I plan to answer all of them. I don't promise to be super detailed, but I promise to answer everything or I'll do my very best. So we're gonna get started. And just so you guys have an idea, like this is how many questions I have. So I opened one to see what would happen, but that's what's left. So we're gonna go to the first one and we're gonna kick this off. I'm getting nervous, my stomach's starting to hurt. <laughs> first question, will you and Wade get a pup? Yes. We really want to adopt our first dog from like the shelter or like save a dog and then we want to get like a purebred type of dog after we get a shelter dog. But yeah, we want a dog really bad but also because we're renting this house like we're very hesitant to get a dog because we don't want to mess things up. You know it's not our place. So spill some tea. I, I know what this is about um, and I've kind of addressed it on my Instagram so you know, I I will spill tea if I'm asked one more time, a little bit more specifically. I will spill, I will spill some some appropriate tea that I am willing to spill. When was the last time you cried? Last night. I literally cried last night because <laughs> we went to go see the new Black Panther movie, you guys, and it was so amazing. You know, so good. I cried four times, and I'm also a very emotional movie watcher. I get very connected to characters. I get very into the movie like it's real life for me and I get very invested. So I cried last night four times. Are you and this person still friends? I don't want to throw names on here just because like God forbid you guys go out of your way to twist my words for whoever's been waiting for this Q&A but I will say that I address this on Instagram as well. A lot of friendships that I had about eight to nine months ago back in my old jobs like they diminished not because there was hate involved. I really think growing apart occurred. And I also think that, you know, when you're pursuing new things in life, it doesn't always guarantee that a lot of people get to join you in the new pursuits. And I think that's just what happened. Friendships die out and fall apart sometimes and grow apart and it's just life. So to answer your question, certain people I'm, I'm not friends with anymore. No hate, just not friends. Do you still visit with your friends from Fat and Weird? I don't really talk to a ton of people from Fat and Weird anymore. Again, it has nothing to do with like, I can't stand it and I don't like this. Like it has nothing to do with that. Like I said earlier, I think friendships and people just grow apart sometimes. And I think on social media, just because you see people like spending a chapter of their lives together doesn't always mean they're guaranteed to be in each other's lives for forever. And I don't know why that's a weird concept for people to understand. <laughs> I think it's very normal to life, but as far as some people are fat and weird, like I'm still friends with some, a few were invited to the wedding that I was really close with, that Wade was close with. I support some of them on social media still. I'm still like cordial slash friends with a handful of people from there, so. How is the maintenance on your hair extensions? Like how often do you have to go in for them and how is the home care? Also, is it damaging your real hair? Great question. I was freaking out about my extensions, you guys, because I just was so scared I was gonna ruin them. Extensions are like a big investment and I didn't know that going into them, but they are. And I love them and I've grown to discover that like I have to be really careful with the types of products I use because my real hair, like this hair is really dry. And so I have to use a lot of like hydrating products, but my actual hair extensions aren't dry. So if I put too much hydrating products in my real hair and it gets into my extensions, it makes it look kind of like flat and greasy. So I really just have to manage like what type of product I use, how I use it. I only wash my hair now like once a week and I dry shampoo like the top of my head like with my real hair quite a bit. I do have to blow dry the tracks as soon as I get out just so I can make sure like nothing falls apart or it like doesn't slip as fast. As far as maintenance on how often I have to go in, I got them in in October originally and I just went back to get them lifted like last week. So I think it's like every six to eight weeks 
I go in to get them lifted. The next appointment I have, she's taking them out all the way, cleaning my hair, trimming them, and putting them back in. So, oh, they aren't damaging my real hair though. Like my real hair feels fine. It's no excessive shedding. That's like abnormal. There's no breakage. Like there's nothing really happening to my real hair. Are you not a part of the cookie company anymore? I stopped working for Fat and Weird in the grand, or not the grand opening, the world record breaking attempt. Cookie Fest was my last event with Fat and Weird. So back in February, that was my last event. And then I was done working for them. So it's been a minute guys. I posted about it on my YouTube channel like after I left, big life update. So if you wanna go back and watch that, you can. It has a little bit more detail about where I was at when I left and stuff like that. But no, I'm not a part of the cookie company anymore. What apps software do you use to edit your Instagram posts and reels? I use CapCut for reels, TikToks, videos for my workouts if I wanna like add words or cut or like that's a really good editing app is CapCut. It's pretty simple to use, like very user friendly. I use this one, this one filter app every now and then for posts called Tezza, T-E-Z-Z-A. -Z -Z I use that for filters on my photos. I don't really think I use anything else to edit my stuff. Like I kinda just use those two apps primarily, so Tezza and CapCut. Your worst habit. Ooh, that's a good one. I think I have a few not so great habits, but I think they all have their own categories. <laughs> I think one big one that I'm not a huge fan of that I'm still working on is like I'm a big people pleaser. I kind of give too much to people who don't deserve it. Not because I don't know the value of my work ethic or my time or my friendships or anything like that, but just because I don't ever want to think that I gave up on something. I'd much rather the other person give up on me or give up on whatever is happening first. So I just stick it out because I want to please them until they say you're not enough and they leave, which is definitely toxic and not okay. <laughs> but that's a pretty like bad habit of mine. I'm still like kind of a control freak when it comes to my life. <laughs> so being a Christian, it's really hard for me. Like I think my biggest cross to carry is fully submitting to like God and what he has for me and trusting that it's all good. Like in my mind, I know it's good. In my heart, I know it's good. But the human in me always tries to fight it on, well, I could be doing this, God. Like, do you think I should do this? Or do I really need to sit here and wait because you're telling me to wait? You know, like it's, I always battle with him on that. So my other worst habit is I'm kind of a control freak, but I'm working on it. And I feel like the first step to healing and growth is admitting the bad habits you have, so. Was wedding night worth the wait? <laughs> my parents watch my YouTube, so I can't really get too in depth with this question, but yes, it was worth the wait. And, you know, doing husband and wife things with my husband is pretty incredible. That's all I'm gonna say. Just spill the tea on what happened with your ex and roommates already. Y'all, I just, I think I'm gonna take this time to just kind of give you my like two cents about y'all's lack, not y'all, certain people's lack of empathy and some people's lack of respect towards other people's choice of privacy. I don't know when things shifted to where keeping things private in your life was all of a sudden a terrible thing. In the real world, whoever's watching this, I can guarantee there were certain moments or people in your life that if things fell apart, you just didn't want to talk about it because it's not really anybody else's business, but you and the people involved. And maybe it's just something you don't want to continuously relive and explain over and over again. So it just, it, it, it blows my mind that on social media especially, like I know people can be open books, but even the most open books on social media are hiding so many things from you guys. It's just how it is. Like people are just, it's very rare to find a person who truly spills every little thing about them on social media or to strangers. I just, to me, it just doesn't logically make sense that when something big happens in my life or something that I don't want to like relive continuously, why I would want to talk about it to people that don't know me, aren't involved. It just, it just blows my mind. You guys need to understand that demanding to know something from a person that you truly don't even know because you just selfishly want to know what's going on in their life to make yourself feel good or feel like you're in the know. Do you, do you hear how that sounds? It's not, it's not very cool. So um, I just wanted to say that and y'all can take that however you want. If you feel convicted to be mad at me or if you feel convicted or attacked by me with that statement, maybe do some self-reflection. I feel like I'm being very nice with how I'm saying this, but so we're gonna segue into a new question. <laughs> how did you and your husband meet? We met 
in 2019 when he was in Houston. This was our first time meeting in passing. I have a whole YouTube video over this as well, so I won't do the whole story again, but I'll just kind of shorten it. But we met in 2019 in Houston. He was participating in summer shredding. I was working the cookie booth at summer shredding, and I just ran into him at the house that he was staying in with all the people that I was working with. And then a couple months later, I moved to Florida, walk into the kitchen, the cookie kitchen, and there he is baking away. And I kind of recognized him, but he had a beard and was bigger than he was at summer shredding. So I wasn't really sure. And then like a couple days into it, I realized, oh my gosh, I've met you before. And then we just started being really good friends, a lot of friend zoning, a lot of uncertain thoughts on, are we gonna date? Are we not gonna date? Should I give him a shot? Should I not give him a shot? Like a lot happened. And then we ended up dating and it's it's been great ever since. So that's kind of the shortened version of how I met him. Why did you choose to unfollow these people? I think something that comes with social media is having the maturity and like self-respect or self, um, like love in, in a sense, I guess, to unfollow or remove people from your life that when you see something that makes you feel sad, hurt, mad, betrayed, like if you feel anything negative from somebody, I don't see the point in following them. Or just even being involved, seeing their stuff because you're jeopardizing your peace at that point. And sure, people may say, oh, you should be strong enough to just see people's stuff and not let it jeopardize your peace. But also I think that's where the maturity of knowing yourself comes in. Um, I think everybody has experienced some sort of negative feeling or negative association or a negative memory with a person they've seen on social media. And like, it doesn't feel very good. For certain people that I unfollowed, I honestly just didn't want to see passive aggressive comments or posts or, you know, things directed at me or my relationship or, th or friendships, whatever the case may be, I don't like passive aggression. So that's a big reason why I don't follow people. And also just if I feel that there's no support, like genuine support for me, my growth as a person off of social media, I don't care to be involved with that. Especially when as friends or as like what friendships are, friendships are off of social media, not just on social media. So once I realized like, oh, this friendship is purely just on a internet platform, like it's not really worth like my time. So that's another reason why I, I choose to unfollow or not see some people's stuff. Tell me a funny joke. Oh my gosh, so this is, I don't think I'll deliver this very well. I'm not good at jokes. There's a tattoo shop that Wade and I drive by to get to the gym and they always put really funny um, things like phrases or jokes on their like little billboard thing. And the most recent one is, Whoever came up with knock-knock jokes should be given a Nobel Prize. You get it? Cause like, it's a knock-knock, there's never a bell involved. I thought that was <laughs> hilarious. There's your joke. <laughs> okay, so I saved a ton of questions that were very repetitive for the end of the video because I feel like it, all of it deserves just one answer. Honestly, like I just don't feel the need to explain myself in 10 different ways for 10 different times or ways you've asked the question. So a lot of it has to do with certain people not being in our lives anymore. Some of it had to do with the wedding. Some of it had to do with leaving fat and weird and like all these different things. And I just want to say that it's very normal for people to grow apart. It's very normal for friendships to just kind of wither away. It's a normal thing. It happens all the time, everywhere. With my particular situation, to put things kind of like in perspective, I had to make a choice between putting my happiness and my mental health and my relationship and my own personal goals with my life up here and put the fear of hurting people, disappointing people, losing friendships down here. Because like I said, my worst habit is I'm a people pleaser. So for a long time, I hung on to something that was just sucking everything out of me. My happiness, my joy, my desire to want to do anything more with my life. Like I was getting to a really deep place of contentment that was not a, a, a peaceful place of contentment. You know, so in that aspect of things, I had to put myself first. And I feel like in life, you need to be able to confidently put yourself first, especially if it if your only worry or if your only reason for sticking with something is so you don't hurt other people. Like those other people are not you and their life is not your life. So you need to put your life first, especially if you're not happy. Um, so that's a really big reason why 
a lot of decisions were made that involved eventually me leaving the company, starting my own stuff, moving out of the apartment we were in. Like that was a big reason of it. It was just, I needed to put my life, my relationship with Wade, my desire to do great things with my life that like I did without needing to rely on other people, I had to put it first. That hopefully puts things into perspective on why I chose, you know, to start this new chapter of my life and doing what I'm doing and I'm really happy with where I'm at right now. And so that's the answer to that part of it. As far as the wedding is concerned, Wade and I came to a conclusion that we only wanted people there that we know love and support us no matter what, who made us feel joy um, and happiness, who made us feel like appreciated. It's just plain and simple. And I feel like, you know, we didn't want any drama. We didn't want any discomfort. We just wanted to have fun and enjoy being married. It was Wade and I's decision to very, to be specific with who we invited and who we didn't. We did choose to invite one person, but the other one was not invited. And we made that decision knowing that both probably would not come. I also, that's not the first time in the world that that has ever happened, okay? Like this isn't a, a, a mark in the history books, guys. Like people make these decisions all the time, so. And I don't regret the decision. Do I regret how it was handled? Yes, because I feel like I personally could have handled it more maturely. I can't change anything about it now. But I don't regret the decision that Wade and I came to because it was literally the most perfect day. I am, all, I am saddened that that whole decision was being exploited into this dramatic thing that it didn't need to be. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at right now. I'm happy with the life that I'm living, the people that are in my life. Like I feel so much more at peace with things. And other people have seen on my Instagram, like I get DMs saying like, you seem so happy and you're glowing. Like, I love this for you. And like, that's what I love for me too, is how happy I feel with my life right now. So I just hope you guys watch this video and you guys can find some sort of contentment with whatever desire you have to know the details. Um, of other people's lives. But yeah, like I said on my Instagram, I want to choose to live in the present. I want to choose to enjoy the like happiness and you know, excitement for the future that I have now. So with all those questions being answered and all of them kind of being a, around the same topic, uh, I hope you guys, you know, respect my decision to choose what I want to say and how I want to explain things. I hope this questionnaire thing wasn't too like bleak and I hope it wasn't too negative. Um, if you can't tell, I hate confrontational questions. <laughs> so we're just gonna call it a day. And this was a great anonymous Q&A. And we're gonna move on to a new vlog this episode. So make sure you like this video if you enjoyed my awkward smiling the whole time. Comment below what you wanna see next on Vlogmas and subscribe so you don't miss anything else. Okay, I'll see you guys next time.